Hello guys, my name is Lata Guta. Today I'm gonna teach you chapter 4, part 1 data modeling using entity relationship model. Be reminded, this is chapter 4, part 1. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, comment to get the next video. Let us start the first concept of chapter 4 part 1 about data modeling to to clearly understand the chapter 4 the whole content of chapter 4 is about the outline is using the first concept about chapter 4 is high level data modeling or database design entity type set attributes and a case the third one is the relationship role structural constraints. Under relationship and the role and the structural constraint, we may see different contents. The fourth one is about weak entity types. The fifth one is about database abstraction. The last one is about entity relational diagram naming conversation and the designing issue. So we will see all of these contents one by one let you start my today's presentation the first concept is about database designing when we say database designing this database designing consists of several tasks to design database when we say that before we designing before we designing a database we must focus on some content the first content to design the database is requirement analysis the second one is conceptual design and schema refinement the third one is the logical design the fourth one is the physical design or tunic this is the most important concept you must understand before defining database designing. Let me see one by one. What is requirement analysis? When we say requirement analyzing is understanding and document the data requirement for database designing. In this phase, in this phase, any user must understand must understand what the, what kinds of database he gonna design the first one the second one is documenting the data requirement for database design the first one and also he must be written consistently and briefly to improve the designing to make clear designing to make clear designing to make clear designing to make designing must be the requirement analyzed is clearly must be clearly clearly and consistently written it must be written consistently and briefly to improve the design in addition in addition a requirement analysis in requirement analysis we specifying functional requirements we must specify functional functional requirement requirements we must specify some functional requirements and also um, specify necessary necessary data and the document documents data the third one is put the data in concisely and briefly, briefly, briefly to improve, improve the, the time. So all of this concept is mostly about the requirement analysis. A requirement analysis. First, we identify some functional requirements, which which functional requirement which which a user a user define it. User define it 
operation and find operation sorry operation that could be that could be that could be applied on database so in requirement analysis a requirement analysis first we identifying some functional requirement and also identifying some user operation that could be applied on database and specifying some necessary data and documenting the data put the data in a consistent manner is about the conceptual it is a requirement analysis the second one is about the conceptual one when we say conceptual one from its name we understand the conceptual name is about the concept of designing so constructing it means that constructing a model independent of any physical consideration that means conceptual schema is description of the data requirements this is a description of of the data requirement and a detailed description of entity type in conceptual we detail we detail describing entity type we detail describing the constraints we detail describing the relationship of each entity in conceptual from this name when we say conceptual design we only focus on some logics some concept or some logics there is no implementation in case of conceptual and also it is high level data modeling which provide concept how user is perceiving this conceptual is mostly focused on how user is perceiving the data no implementation phase no implementation phase it is only focusing on how user can get the data from the database and also what the entity type may i use what constraint may i apply what kinds of relationships are there between the entity is described in conceptual design the second concept is about the logical design it is constructing a model of information used in enterprise based on specific data model in case of logical design data model we focus on a specific data model when we say logical designing actually actual implementation of the database this is the actual implementation of the database actual implementation of the database the third one is about the physical the physical one is producing description of implementation of the database on a secondary storage describe storage the stru storage structure access method use the chief efficiency as for the data so simply this physical design is mostly mostly it is internal storage structure it is specified internal storage intra stru structure the index the access path or access paths are specified by using this physical design we specify we specify the index we specify access path of specific data in which is stored in logic in which store in internal storage structure so we can classify above the logical design is independent of database management system only functional analysis by using high level data model below that means from logic design and the physical design we may say application program or transaction implementation bear in mind bear in mind so we can classify this three level three level of database design into two parties into two parties the first one in the first one is what we call is application program or transaction implementation this logical design and physical design is classified as the application program because in logical design we implement some kinds of code to design database by using physical design we may use some query to retrieve the data from the database so we can classify these two into application program and the transaction implementation implementation the first one or the conceptual design is what we call is functional analyze or high level data modeling the other one is conceptual data designing content is the important activities are identified the first one is entity attribute relationship and the constraints are the most important activity are identified to design the database model and and based on this concept 
components developed in the relational model using ER diagram or entity relation diagram. Let me see. Entity relational entity relationship model. Entity relationship model is used to represent conceptual view of the database. The main components of entity relational models are entity. When we say entity, corresponding to the, in the entire table, the table name is what we call is entity, not a row. Only we can represent entity as a table. We can by using symbol rectangle, represented by rectangle. Attribute means anything which gives detailed description about some entities, what we call is attribute. We can represent attribute with the oval, oval shape. A relationship represent the association that exists between entity. If there, if we may use few or more than two entity, we need we need to put some relationship between the entity. To design the relationship between entity, we must use some kind of relationship relationship diagram. To represent the relation, we may use this diamond, and the constant is represent the constant on that data model. This is some concept of entity relational model. Before working on conceptual design of a database, one has to know and answer the following question. Before you starting the conceptual conceptual design, the first one is requirement analysis. Before that, any designer must understand these concepts. What the first one is what are the entity and the relationships? What kinds of entity are I have and what kinds of relationship between them? The first one you must answer. The second one is what information about this entity and the relationship should we store in a database? After we know the entities and the relationship between the entity, the second one is what kinds of information is necessary about this entity may I store in a database? The third concept is what are the integrity constraints that holds? What kinds of integrity constraints may I apply in each entity? The fourth one is constraint on each data with respect to updating, retrieving, and the story. After we finishing the above creation, the other quick, quick other K concept is what kinds of constraints you may apply during you updating the data from the database? What kinds of searching technique you may use to retrieve the data from the database? What kinds of algorithm you, you may use to store the data data in a database? This is another concept. The last one is represents information picture. How you must represent in which way you can represent ER, ER diagram, entity relation diagram. After you identify the relation, after you identify the relationship, after you know the information necessary, you may necessary to store about the entity, I, and after you identify the integrity constraint, how you may draw the diagram in the concept, other concept. Uh, the other one is the developing of entity relation diagram. Designing conceptual model for a database. A database is not one linear. We cannot drawing entity relation diagram with one single task. So we may use iterative activity. Again and again, you must check your diagram by adding, by dropping some kinds of rows by adding some attribute by adding some entity you may you may update your entity relational diagram so we may use iterative method to draw entity relational diagram to identify the entity attribute relationship constraints on the data there are different set of methods used during this analysis phase a requirement analysis a requirement analysis it must focus on the necessary or a very important entity only and also very important attribute to describe the entity very important relationship between entity and necessary constraints the constraint which must be applied on entity is selected to design a diagram this is including gathering we may gather by you may collect the data by interviewing by uh, questioning by direct observation, by examination, different. So the second part is the part four is about developing a diagram with example. I will show you 
thank you for viewing my watching my video please subscribe like